everyone. It was about eight years back and uh, it was my first product management role. Three months into my job, a bunch of us were sitting in a conference room looking at charts. And that particular day, the lead gen platform numbers were not looking good. We came to learn that one of the suppliers had a problem with inventory and the leads generated for that particular day had dropped significantly. We were continuing to discuss when my VP at that time came into the conference room, learned about what was going on, turned toward me and asked, so how does this impact our partners? Do we have to send them any communication? And do we have to notify our customer care team? I did not have any of the answers. To be frank, I had not thought about any of them. And that was the day I realized that I needed to start thinking end to end. Hi everyone, my name is Suman Sishadri, Lead Product Manager of DocuSign. And today I'm gonna to be talking about the essentials to becoming a successful product manager. So let's get started. Now, success is a very subjective term. If you ask 10 people, one person could be defining it one way, another person another way. So what I'd like to do even before we go ahead is to really define what success means in this context. I would like to define a successful product manager as someone who understands the customer's needs, who's able to align the internal teams towards a common vision or goal, and someone who delivers value to the customer. As many of you may be knowing, the product manager's role is extremely complex. And part of the complexity is because the product manager has to work with a lot of different teams. As you all know, the product manager, of course, needs to talk to customers, learn about their pain points, learn about what alternatives the customer may use if not for their product, talk to partners, tools, tooling teams, of course, engineering teams, sales, UX, content, the list goes on. And the most important part here is they're dealing with different kinds of people with you know, different backgrounds. And therefore, it sort of becomes very important to be able to use a variety of skills in order to accomplish the goal, which is to inspire the team to get the vision and the roadmap implemented and being able to launch refine and iterate. So what are some of the skills required to be a successful product manager? There are many, many skills needed, but let me also say that, um, you know, some people may have a natural talent towards these skills, but some of the skills will also have to be learned. And sometimes they take several years to learn. As for me, I'm also working on some of these skills after all these years of product management, but it's actually to be more uh, conscious about it and learn to practice and improve by the day. So that's pretty much the goal. So let's look at the first skill that I've listed here, research skills. Research skills, what is it? It's the ability to analyze, interpret and evaluate. And why are research skills important? Because day to day, there are a lot of questions that might be coming up in your job. We will have to probably understand a little bit more about the competition, about the landscape, of course, about the customers. And what's really important is to have the curiosity, number one, which is a very important trait for product managers, and also be able to really you know, roll up your sleeves and dig into some of these things. Um, when I say dig in, to find uh, facts and gain understanding, and all of these actually may be able to help you come up with solutions to a problem. Let's say you're looking for a PM job. What kind of research and analysis would you do prior to the job interview? I'm sure you've all you know, attempted to apply for a job. so. Here are some of the things that come to mind for me. So one is really about the company itself, going through the company's website, learning about what they do, the product, the offerings, the kind of business model, 
also about the company culture, the values, what kind of pay, um, you know, to be able to answer the interview questions better, one might want to also look up the types of interview questions uh, that might come up, who the interviewees, interviewers are, um, and also study about industry trends. And if you are going to apply for a particular, you know, product, you might even, you know, think about researching about the product online, getting the customer feedback, and that would really help you in your interview to answer the questions as well as to have an engaging conversation with the interviewers. Next, let's move on to communication skills. Communication skills are really the ability to articulate effectively using the best communication channel or medium for the situation. So when you talk of communication skills, there are two things that are important. One is oral communication skills, where you use the right terminology, where you try to be very clear and succinct in how you speak by also giving examples. And the second you know, thing is written communication. And I think um, in some cases, a lot of people um, may be underrating written communication skills, but I think it's supremely important because writing actually helps formulate your thoughts. And that way you have a better structure, you ask questions as you're writing and it comes up, you, you generally have a better plan. And you might even be able to, you know, figure out what kind of holes you have in your thought process so that you can do more research to, to plug in those holes to be able to have a good, um, you know, written message. And why do you need all this? I think it's extremely important to have oral, good oral and good written communication to be able to work effectively and efficiently. For example, let's say you're conducting a meeting. If you give them a pre-read, it automatically becomes, um, you know, a, an effective meeting. So here is a question for you. Let's say that you have concerns on a complex architectural diagram. Which method of communication would you choose? Number one, start a group Slack message with the team over the weekend. Second, write a detailed email to the architect regarding your concerns on the design. Third, have a follow-up meeting with the architect and key stakeholders. Number four, write a detailed email and schedule a follow-up meeting with the architect and key stakeholders. Which one would you choose? Let me begin by saying that please don't communicate with your team or anybody over the weekend. Because I have noticed based on my experience that, you know, even if someone is really passionate about their job, if you send something, let's say a Slack message over the weekend, someone else replies and then someone else replies. So over, you know, over several hours, you have multiple people replying and other people feel obliged to write as well. So as a result of which uh, a weekend, which is supposed to be the time off to relax, kind of becomes, uh, you know, almost like another weekday. And so the weekend and week, a uh, weekday sort of merges and you're not really getting the benefit of relaxing over the weekend. So I highly um, discourage any kind of communication over the weekend or even out of office hours, unless it is super urgent, super critical, and really has to go like uh, a very important thing that needs to be handled. In that case is yes, it should be the exception, but not the norm. In this scenario, I would recommend that you write um, a detailed email and then follow up with a meeting, which is, I'm, I'm choosing number four, because it is a complex architectural design. And if things are very complex, there could be a lot of miscommunication so it's better to have one version which is in written that people can read prior to the meeting. And then in the meeting, you're using your oral communication skills to talk about it, discuss, and then you know, alleviate the concerns and to move forward in your project. So I would recommend number four. Now, the third skill is listening skills. So what are listening skills? It's the ability to keep an open mind to accurately receive and understand spoken 
and unspoken messages. So the key thing here is to keep an open mind because if you are mentally not prepared to listen, even if you try really hard, it's going to be difficult for you. And listening skills are especially important because you want to empathize with people and build trust. Whether it's a customer you're speaking to, whether it's a partner you want to work with, whether it's your stakeholders, listening skills are extremely important. Now, what are some good ways to let other people know that you're listening? Especially in this remote environment, it's uh, important to allow the other person to speak. Help them finish the answer and then you, you bring up your point of view or anything that you have to say. Interrupting is rude and it can also uh, you know, stop their train of thought. So it's um, good to first allow them to speak and then you can acknowledge that you're listening by nodding, by summarizing and asking them the right questions. And most importantly, it's also important to listen without judgment and to keep an open mind because that's the first thing. Whenever you are having a conversation, keep an open mind. Next skill, sales skill. What are skills, sales skill? Well, for a product manager, are skills, sales skills important? Well, it's the ability to sell by demonstrating conviction and confidence. And why do we need it? Because as a product manager, day in and day out, we are in meetings. We're trying to sell an idea, a concept, a product, a feature. And everybody else is also trying to do the same thing. So we need to be able to have skills to influence teams, to make the right argument when needed. And we'll be using all of your skills, your research skills and your communication skills um, and your listening skills and perhaps more of the skills that I've, we'll be talking about, analytical skills, a lot of these skills in order to make this sale. And ultimately the goal is to help move your business metrics forward. So you'll be using it pretty much every day in every meeting. And here is a very fun question. What should a salesperson do after selling? I've specifically called it salesperson here. Stop talking. <laughs> so that's the most important thing. When you have convinced somebody using your confidence and your conviction, and if they're sold, stop talking because there's a risk of you know, people changing their mind or you blurting out something else if you have already done the sale. So better to actually keep quiet when, you know, the sale is done. Let's look at our next skill, which is analytical skills. What are analytical skills? It's the ability to analyze a problem at hand. So as a product manager, you know, as I mentioned previously, your job is to move the business forward and you'll be working with a lot of business metrics. Analytical skills are necessary first and foremost to get a you know, grasp of the, the baseline, knowing where you stand, doing that analysis, getting the data, looking into it, building a story. And then you'll have to figure out, let's say you're launching a feature or launching a new product. You have to figure out whether it's actually making a difference or not. So tracking, instrumenting, and uh, creating those dashboards in order to provide the data is important. And as you look at the data, it's important to gain insights and build that story that you can use for selling. What metrics would you use if you were to modify the account sign up on a website? So if you are modifying the sign-up screen of your website, what metrics would you be measuring? Any ideas? Here are some. So first, you'd look at the number of users who signed up, the number of failed attempts, of course, page views, unique visitors, and last but not the least, conversion rate, which means 
you know, for the number of unique visitors coming in, how many people actually signed up and you find, use this formula to find the conversion rate. The next one is end-to-end -end thinking skills. Now, a few years back, um, one of the teams, not my team, but a different team, released a functionality onto production. And within 24 hours, there were thousands of phone calls to customer care because inadvertently, the release had removed an important feature and a lot of strategic merchants were affected by that. So what is extremely important to understand as a product manager is to learn how changes in one part of the product or one part of the company can affect a different part of the company. So it also helps you understand the pros and cons and also understand and assess the risks of what you're trying to do. Um, and some examples as I mentioned in day-to-day -day operations, it's gonna come in very handy. And when you're providing the requirements, if you uh, think end-to-end, -end, there may be you know, other teams, dependent teams that need to do uh, some work in order for you to achieve your goal. You may be able to you know, uh, get, get that piece prioritized with different dependent other teams. And so it's important to really step back and think end-to-end. -end. Here's, a, here's a question, fun question for you, for you all. Let's say that you are tasked with replacing an old tool with a new tool, what aspects would you need to think about? So you have an old tool that's already working. Many users are already using that old tool. Now you're tasked with replacing it with a new tool. What all would you, would you have to think about? Any thoughts? Now, if an old tool is being replaced by a new tool, first and foremost, we have to understand the problems that were happening with the old tool. And then you have to make a decision, okay, so if those are the old, I mean, problems with the old tool, will bringing in a new tool, what are the things you have to take care of to make sure that, that you know, the same problems are not repeated? You have to, you know, ensure that their new tool meets the, the goal. Right? resolves all those problems. You might want to do gap analysis and then um, you might want to assess the costs. If you are you know, going with a third party vendor, there may be costs associated with it. So we have to figure out what those costs are. There's also implementation costs, maintenance costs. Think from those angles. The level of effort, because it's already a tool that people are using, there might be some migration cost also associated with it. You might have to migrate users, you might have to migrate data, you may have to recreate dashboards, um, you may have to train the users. And last but not the least, you also have to come up with a way to sunset the old tool because we don't want two versions of the same tool running, right? Because that it adds maintenance costs. So you also have to think about the plans to sunset the old tool. The next skill is organization skills. It's the ability to maximize efficiency by using structure and process in the ways of working. So I'll take a little moment to talk about the ways of working. So as you are a product manager, you, as I mentioned, you're working with different departments and if you take a particular project, it's also important to understand the roles and responsibilities. Which team is responsible for doing what? That is something that you want to know very clearly so that you, know, you can uh, approach the right team for what is needed. Of course, there is going to be a program manager that you may be working with, but um, if it's a very, very small company, you may be wearing multiple hats. You may be the program manager as well. So it's important to understand who is doing what, and then you know, establish the process right up front. So the way of working, this is how the process will be. You know, um, The requirements will be written, then you will be going to UX and the content teams. You know, the other teams uh, you will identify, for example, dependent teams, and then you will have to release planning, 
you will create your dashboards and then you will go live, you will analyze. So you have established the process and make sure everyone understands what the process is because if that is not clear, you can add to confusion as well. And if you do all these steps, certainly uh, based on my experience, it improves productivity, increases focus and clarity of thought as well. And overall, it helps you, you know, reduce errors. And, you know, one might uh, know that a product manager, you know, dealing with all these different teams, they're often double booked, triple booked. So time management is also extremely critical. Now, I have a question for you. Let's say it's Monday and your goal for the week is to complete writing requirements for your upcoming project. What methods would you use to get it done? Thoughts? So you have a job to finish. You have to finish your requirements by the end of the week. So what steps would you take? to achieve your goal. First and foremost, plan your week. Because if, you, if that's your goal for the week, plan how your week should look. There may be meetings where you may not be the, the main person to uh, you know, contribute. In those cases, maybe you can you know, um, decline that meeting or you can postpone that meeting, request to be postponed. And other things you can do is also block time on your calendar so that people don't, you know, take your time because you're responsible for managing your own time. So you can block your calendar. You can also make to-do lists of all your important tasks and prioritize. So in, the, in this example, you'll be prioritizing writing requirements because that's one of your major goals for the week. And try to avoid distractions and multitasking. Multitasking never works. Um, especially for me, I like to just do one thing at a time and get it out of the way and, and work in blocks of, um, blocks of hours. I think that helps me really focus and uh, be very productive. And you may have your own style of working, but these are some suggestions that you know, normally people use and you can try to see whether this works for you as well. The last but not the least, interpersonal skills. What are interpersonal skills? It's the ability to interact well with others using effective communication skills while demonstrating respect and emotional intelligence. So product manager, of course, works with a lot of departments, lots of people, and lots of people coming from different backgrounds with different levels of knowledge. For example, one person might be a newbie, just joined the company. Another person might have you stayed with the company for a very long time. And the levels of knowledge might be different, but as you're running a meeting, you have to cater to you know, all of the audience. And so interpersonal skills are very important and uh, using good judgment on you know, how to work with uh, people is also important. Let's say that's something very sensitive. You might want to do it on a one-on-one -on -one basis. If, um, if you are, um, you know, trying to earn the trust of people, then you might want to really talk to them and listen to them. And because li by listening, you're showing that you care and that you want to work with them and, you know, move things forward. So that's, uh, that's how you earn trust um, and using the right um, choice of words. And, uh, and, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's too, I mean, it's, it's people working. So you have to also be cautious about, um, you know, other people's feelings and how you leave them feeling and um, have a, um, an awareness about your own emotional skills as well. So these are some of the important things I would say when it comes to interpersonal skills. Now, it's not uncommon to have a disagreement with the coworker. So in such cases, what steps would you take in order to resolve a disagreement? So here are some things to think about. So first and foremost, it's important to separate the person from the problem. And secondly, it's important to keep an open mind 
and to understand the source of concern because a disagreement happens because you know they have a different point of view and you may have a different point of view and you may actually be be uncomfortable with the other person's proposal so it's important to share what your concern is and where that is sourcing from and keep an open mind and listen objectively maybe there is truth in uh, in uh, you know what the other person is saying and maybe you have to change so keep an keep an open mind and ready to uh, and and be flexible and be ready to change um when you are talking to with other people of course you know it's uh, it's important to to have show your credibility and uh, also be poised at um, you know at work but that said sometimes you know even i am when when i'm speaking with uh, with other teams you know when you're really passionate about the idea that you're proposing or the way you want certain things to be done you kind of get really you know uh, loud <laughs> so those are some things to also um think about and be conscious uh, conscious about that's also something i'm working on and at the end of the day continue to work with the other person because as i said at the end of the day there are people people in the comp- company who have a similar vision who have the same same goals and you're just trying to align and there's going to be some some disagreement here and there it's okay to disagree but at the end of the day you should be able to go and have coffee with your coworker putting all the disagreement aside so that's that's a good place to be if you are if you're there and you know try to find a uh, common ground and that will really help your uh, career as well now we spoke about a lot of these skills so how will you acquire and hone these skills how should one do that first is conscious learning there are many methods it's not one way there are many ways and one would do it according to what suits them you could be reading a lot of books you can follow you know influencers who you respect and who are your role models you can learn from your mentors you can attend classes you can listen to podcasts read articles but at the end of the day being conscious is the most important thing and learning is you know by being present like now this moment things are happening being conscious about that moment is is important because you can think about how that moment uh, would would go by the second thing is observations when you are working with a team you know it's um it's something that you can observe how are the team dynamics how are the people working with each other during the meetings uh, i'm sure product managers spend several hours during the day in meetings you can um look for body language nonverbal cues and patterns that that repeat you know our brain is very good at at finding patterns so that's something you can do and you know how productive is the meeting how um, efficient are people working these are all the things that you know you can observe and if you feel that there's room for improvement you can propose ways to improve and i'm sure that it, it will be uh, appreciated by your team as well and last but not the least you know practice is important practice your skills every day practice to make progress and don't think of you know trying to be perfect it it never works and perfection is also subjective what is perfect to me may not be perfect to someone else so don't strive for perfection but to make progress and asking for feedback feedback is hard getting feedback is hard giving feedback is also hard so try to do your best at um, you know giving and receiving feedback and aim to do your work well consistently because as you do things consistently things become a habit and it will become more natural as time passes well so that's pretty much it the ending slide to be conscious while learning to observe and to practice i hope you enjoyed this presentation if you'd like to know a little bit more about my background do check me out on linkedin take care and stay safe bye bye